Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. Welcome to today's episode and today we're going to chat about the importance of planning your composition. But before we get on to that, thank you so much to everyone who's been sharing the work they've been doing for the challenges on social media. Keep them coming. We love seeing what you're doing. And also a huge thank you to our latest Kofi supporters. Your support shows us that you like what we do and you'd like us to continue. And we're going to thank each of you personally at the end of the show. And we've got a lovely podcast review. And it says, inspirational, five stars. Sandra and Tara are not only beautiful artists, <laughs> and made me laugh, but quite possibly, um, without knowing it, extremely inspirational. They put the heart, with a capital A-R-T, sharing their accumulated knowledge with genuine love and care for the listener's art journey. I'm not an artist, but an inspiring jazz guitarist, hobbyist, and I'm finding inspiration to explore the colours of my music more deeply. I may even pick up a paintbrush one of these days. Thank you both so much for the knowledge and the love you put out there. It's truly appreciated. It's so lovely to have the veil of snobbishness lifted away from the art world. You both have amazing, unique and emotional art styles and share so freely. A rare and beautiful find in this crazy world. Stay awesome. And that's from Tommy Toothless via Apple Podcasts in the UK. Well, in the UK, yeah. I think what he actually said was they put the art into heart. <laughs> Oh, yes. yes. I'm amazed, <laughs> Tara, that you, you didn't give that to me because normally anything that comes in that's long, Tara throws my way because she hates reading know, I, out long things. <laughs> I knew you'd say no because it was a review. So, oh. slide to the next bit about a bulb, or do you want to read that? No, you do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And finally, we want to thank our sponsor, Evolve. Evolve can teach you how to paint in a realism style to a professional level in a year or less. And it's for a fraction of the price of an art school because that costs a blooming fortune. Not only do they provide you all the lessons and support that you need online, but they also send you the materials as well. And they can cost a lot as well. Mm. You can watch a free webinar. And when I say webinar, it's actually a tutorial. So even if you don't want to actually take the course is well worth a watch and that webinar you go you can find by going to kickinthecreatives.com forward slash evolve webinar if you want to hear more about the evolve program you can go back and listen to episode 67 and 73 anyway sandra what's new with you uh well i finished my donuts painting so that's uh well i'm really really happy with that because i, I think i hadn't finished last time i I can't remember I if I finished know. it. You I might think have I was just very finished. nearly. But um yeah, th- this is um this is a painting I did of a stack of donuts and the jam was sort of all oozing out of the sides. If you want to see it, you can go to my we- either go to my website or go to um, my Instagram and you'll be able to see the finished painting. But um we'll tell people where that is just in case. Oh, uh okay, so my website is Sandra Buzz oh is it? <laughs> I can't remember. Sandra, Sandra Busby, Busby Art. Art. Com. yeah god it's terrible isn't it and uh yeah I'm Sandra.Busby on Instagram because I know sometimes when we talk about things that we do and people might be wondering what it, it you know what we're talking about or what it looks like so that's those are the places you can see it but actually this was a piece that I really needed to work because anyone who's been a long-term listener of this podcast knows that I went through a really bad um art block uh, this year and it was the first painting I had done coming out of it so it's one of those paintings that I I needed to work but also I needed it to be a challenge because I think that was part of my original problem was the fact that I just wasn't challenging myself anymore and it was a new subject I hadn't tried um, i.e you know normally I'd do glass and marbles and all that sort of thing this was bread well it's not bread donuts and jam and I was actually really excited about painting the jam because obviously that's the shiny bit but um I think the little tiny little crystals of sugar that I've scattered around the sides I found that the most I think that was the most fun part and um but what was different about this painting as well is it's the first time I've ever used um 
I suppose you could call it mixed media. It's still an oil painting, but essentially the base layers are acrylic. I've always gone from start to finish in oils, and this is the first time I had done a painting with acrylics as the underlayers, um, and then gone over the top with oils, which is fine. You can't do it the other way round. You can't do... I'm sure most people know this, but anyone who's a beginner listening to this, don't do it the other way around. Don't do oils, then acrylics, but you can do acrylics, then oils. So what it actually meant was, really, if I had done that painting from start to finish without really stopping, um, apart from, you know, if I was saying, say, going to do um, every day in the studio working on that painting, it probably would have taken me a week. Uh, Whereas, obviously, when I do oils takes me a much longer time than that because I'm having to wait for days in between layers for the layers to dry so yeah even though it still took me quite a while because I had breaks between I wasn't I went back to painting after my block not pressuring myself to to go in there all the time just to go when I wanted to go in and yeah it worked for me and I'm I'm, I love the painting even if I say so myself I was really pleased with it so yeah so that's what's new with me I finished my donuts. Also, I well, we're going to talk about this later, so I'm not going to touch too much on this now. But I have revisited an older painting, um, but I'll talk about that a bit later because yeah. it's sort you of know what the, we're talking about today. <laughs> you know the one that you've done of the donuts. Can you actually see any of the acrylic now or not? Um, well, no, it's all covered. It is. It's all covered with oil, so it's all you covered with oils. Although there's some obviously transparent glazes, so even though right. you can probably see the acrylic strokes, if you like, if you were to look very yeah. closely, there'll be a, a, a glaze over it with oil. Right. So yes, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. I think the finish. You know, you could, with some paintings you get dull areas and then shiny areas. It, yeah. it could be like that. And you with acrylics, you can't oil it out to. to rectify that so um so oiling out is where you sort of um you put a layer of medium over or you work a layer of medium over your oils once they're dry to sort of even out the gloss you can't do that with varnish because even if you varnished a painting like that it would still end up some parts dull and some parts not so that's another that's another episode i think going into all of that but yeah no it needs to be the top layer needs to be all one if you know what i mean yeah so it all sort of unifies well it, yeah for me it does i mean other people might do it not you know it depends what, yeah. what you're looking for what look you're after but i want i was very important to me that i wanted it to be a very visibly my style my painting and not no different yeah in that respect it was just a different way of getting there so if someone looked at that painting they wouldn't know that you'd done the acrylics rather than oil no no, no. not at all no because the finish is very much with it's oils so yeah yeah but uh, right. anyway, Tara, what about you? What is new with you? Well, my art has not been flowing, so I'm not going to be very upbeat here. <laughs> it's been terrible. <laughs> it's actually it's actually been getting me down quite a bit. Everything oh. I paint, I think for the last few months, um, this has been on and off all this year, really. Um, it just doesn't look how I want it, want it to in the end. And uh, and I was trying to work out why it might be. And I think some of it, well, some of it is, I think I've got this poster up, like you have, of some of my favourite bits of the faces I've done in the past. And yeah. a lot of them happened when I was doing the NFTs. But I think it's because I painted a hell of a lot then. I was doing multiple paintings a day sometimes. Um, and then those ones I've got there, up there, so I've got 10, there's 10 paintings, a prints of 10 paintings, but they are the cream of the cream, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But but you forget that, okay, they're there, but you probably did another 100 or another 50 that you didn't like as much as those. So that that's one thing. And then also I've been doing that uh, Facebook advertising for the last couple of months, two mm. or three months actually. Yeah. And I've now stopped that. So I think it's a bit of a... You know, like a come down after you've done something. Yeah. It's not as successful as you want it to be. Because I was I was doing this Facebook advertising where you do this free print offer. Yeah. And then you basically offer upsells. So what you hope is someone will buy something a little bit more 
and so it covers your advertising costs and then also um, they're signed up for your email list and then hopefully they might buy things in the future and they become a fan Um, and it started off and at one point it was going really well and I was like I'm going to put more money into this so I started putting a little bit more money into it and then Facebook said would you like to do this it should improve your results you know press this button it should help and I thought well if they're recommending it it's got to be good so I pressed the button after I did that it was oh my god terrible oh you just pressed their upsell (laughs) no no it didn't it didn't cost any more oh I see I thought you meant you had to pay for extra right no no it was basically uh Facebook saying um if you do this it should improve your results and what was it then what was it you were doing I I don't know. They obviously do their algorithm. It obviously right. does something with that. So mm. I don't know if it opens it out to more people or more people they think will buy your stuff. So anyway, I pressed, I pressed this button. It said, Facebook recommends that you do this. Press this button. It, it does, you know, it does something to, which will improve your results on your ads or should do. Right. And I pressed it. After that, my results were not good. So I took the button off. You could go and take it off. But that was that seemed to mess it up, basically. So Do you think that could have been a coincidence? or It could have been, yes. Mm. It could have been a total coincidence. Um, and I also then afterwards heard someone saying, because basically I think I was paying about £10 originally a, a day. Yeah. And then I upped it to 20 because it was doing well. Um, £20 a day? £20 a day, yes, because I was making more right it was i was making enough money to cover it kind of thing if you know what i mean and uh and then i've read somewhere that never increase your daily thing more than 10 percent. otherwise they sometimes reset it they reset your ad as in it has to learn all over again so it's like oh anyway that was very frustrating so i think some of it might be that i've coming down off you know you do something like that and then you're sort of coming down off of it well, when it was you think so- it's going to work and then you th- you see a, a glimpse that it is possibly working and then it all sort of goes downhill, it, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a downer, isn't it? Mm. So there's that. But, um, yeah, and also I think, here's all the reasons I think, which is all me guessing. Also, I think I'm perhaps I'm taking too much notice of well-meaning people that I know, that right. this is people around here, who keep suggesting I should paint other things. Did, did I tell you about the woman when I was on a walk? That yes, I know? you did, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, she won't be listening. And she was trying to be nice, but she I'll, I'll tell everybody else. So basically she said, oh, she goes, Tara, you are so talented. She goes, I was looking at your stuff the other day. I was looking at your process videos. They're amazing. She goes, why don't you just paint something else for your bread and butter? You know, <laughs> basically something else that people will like. And then you could always just do your faces for yourself. Oh God! Yeah, yeah. But she that's was trying a really to be well-meaning helpful. comment, but yeah. really having a really yeah, I can see the negative effect that would have. Yeah, and I've had other people say like, because my mum obviously loves the street one. I gave her the city street one. She loves that, and she said, "Oh, you do more of these." She didn't say don't do the faces, but no. it's like you start to think, oh. What, am I doing it wrong? Do you know no, what I mean? you're not doing it wrong. But you're, no, but you're the artist; they're the viewers, and and it's all about what they, you know. Oh, she's so good! I'd love to see how she does this. I'd love to see how she does that. So it is a compliment in in most for the most part. But what they don't understand is obviously it has to be coming from you and how you know what you want to paint. It's not really about what they want to see, is it necessarily? Well, and also, if, if I think about it, like. Um, the the woman on the walk, uh, a friend of mine, is like she would never buy my work, sort of thing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, she's not my audience anyway, sort of thing. I don't even know if she buys original paintings. No. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, that was one thing. But but finally, a, a slight up, if you want the up bit, which is um, I did <laughs> I did a painting um, because of the the. Um, free print campaign i was doing um a guy who ran music events contacted me he well he does something to do with a a vinyl record label as well and he asked me if i wanted to display a few of my prints at an event he was doing so he just put up some prints on the wall um but because you were worried that might be a scam weren't you 
Oh, oh I wasn't sure. Because yeah. you just don't know if no. someone contacts you online. But it, it, but it wasn't. No. Yeah, it wasn't. Um, but basically, I, he had someone who was doing the, like, running the event. Not running the event. You know the person who presents it? So the presenter at the event was a guy called John Robb. And uh, I thought, oh, God, he's got an amazing face, that guy. But I didn't want to reach out to him at the time because I was painting so bad. So I thought, so was it? Yes, no, day before yesterday, I thought, I really want to paint him. So I'm just going to paint him for myself. Not going to tell him or anything like that. Not going to ask him. Just going to do it. And I thought, oh, it's not, it's, not, it's not bad. You know, it's not amazing, but it's not bad. So then I sent it to him and I said, you know, can I get you permission to share this on social? And he, he was really nice about it, really complimentary. So I shared it. Oh, fantastic. So that That's was a nice. bit more of an up. Well, yeah. we're living up to Tommy Toothless review, aren't we? We're not, um, we, are, we are pretty honest about things when, when things aren't going well <laughs> for <Yes>. us. <laughs> and... Um, I, I do think that's important. You know, it's, it would be easy, wouldn't it, to have a podcast and think every time you do one, you've got to be this inspirational person that's like, oh, come on, everybody. But that's not the reality of life in any way, is it? What, no matter what you do. And sometimes I listen to things and I, I think, oh, you can't possibly feel like this all the time, you know. And so I do you think saw it's... You beat, you mean? Well, yeah, and positive about everything because it's, everything isn't always positive. No matter how successful everyone, you know, some people appear to be and how great life appears to be, it isn't always... It doesn't always um, work like that. So I do, as much as, yes, I, I know we're both... We've both had a bit of a few months of, like, blur, blah or whatever it is, and you're feeling a little bit pants... Um, I think it's really valuable to share that to other people because it shows that that is the normality of what we do, isn't it? It's slightly um, frustrating, I'm finding, though, because mm. this is, for me, it's been very on and off this year, totally on and off this year. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, you and I, but it's funny how we've both... <laughs> maybe it's something in the water. I don't know, but, yeah, it's funny how we've both had a bit of an odd year. But moving on to... As, is there anything else new with you, by the way, or, or not, before uh, I move no. on? Right. So, so <laughs> one thing on. I was going to say, no, one yeah. thing I was going to say, is when you were talking about um, people and they appear to be so successful and all this mm. online, I often do wonder, you've got these people and they've got, you know, 100,000 followers, and I often do wonder if that actually equates to a successful art career or not. Do you know I what don't mean? know. No, no, no. I, I have no idea. You don't about know what that. I mean. Yeah, I do. I do no. know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Also, I do think when you have a hundred thousand followers, you almost feel like you have to be something that perhaps you're not always, because yeah, you're worried you might lose the people that that have, have you know have listened to you because you're so positive and you know. But it isn't. That isn't the reality of things. It really isn't. You know. Well, I wish it was. Yeah, But yeah, move, moving on to what we're talking about today, which is the importance of planning ahead. So going back to a, a conversation we were having a couple of weeks ago, and you were doing a painting of a person specifically to get a likeness because she was going to see it and she was going to share it on her social media. Yeah. And you texted me and said, oh, God, I'm having a bit of a nightmare with this one. And you showed me the piece and you showed me the photograph the photographic reference now yeah. if you didn't show me just the piece i'd have gone well what what's the problem what what's the problem i don't get it it's it looks great sort of thing but because you showed me that photograph i had fresh eyes and i said well okay so maybe it's the the angle of the face um, i even knew that was wrong That's yeah the thing. Yeah, you yeah. did. You did. You, I wasn't yeah. pointing out anything that you didn't already <laughs> no, know. No, you did point things out, things I didn't know. You pointed out because I was going too heavy on the background colour, not leaving any white, which I hadn't noticed myself. Yeah, and it was literally because I was going through your other bits saying, well, I like, what do I like about this, this and this that I prefer yeah. over that one? And it was more that you had that sort of white, bit of white space. And it was just these little subtle observations I made that you asked me to have a look at this thing and I told you. But, you know, um, basically you then, with these sort of fresh eyes, <laughs> could see straight away what I meant. And you did it again. And it was 
complete different painting, wasn't it? It really, and it was great. It really looked like her. You could see it was meant to be her. And you were chuffed to bits with it then, weren't you? You were like, oh, that's No, it. I wasn't chuffed to bits. Well, compared to what it, you were. Compared to what it was before. But what, what I did after you sort of... Because I knew, you know when you know the angle's wrong, but yeah. you don't know how to get it right. Yeah. I didn't know how to get it right. And I ended up doing what you suggested, which was um, drawing it out first. Yeah. Which I don't enjoy because that takes the no. spontaneity out for me, yeah. which, which is what I enjoy about it. But basically, I think I'd already tried nine times. <laughs> I'm, oh, not, no. I'm not joking God. by the time I'd got to that one. So, um, yeah, so when you suggested draw it out, I drew it out. And then I actually put sort of marks on my board, actually of the drawing, and yeah. then used that. But, yeah, I, I just couldn't. Even though I could see that the angle was wrong, couldn't see how to make it right. But you, but after once you'd done that, it had yeah. it turned into a successful piece, didn't it? Yes. So it for the last yeah. I heard, obviously that was the last one you did, and I th- and I thought, oh, that's good. You know, you've you've because you'd had this, you'd have had this, um, uh, like run of like you say paintings that you didn't like. So yeah. I, I sort of thought, oh, this is it. This is where she's sort of going to turn back around the, the other corner again. <laughs> so obviously no. things haven't been that way. No, not really. No, I did, I did a painting of a dog that I haven't shared. Mm. That, that's okay. I'll have to show you, actually, because I wouldn't mind a second opinion on that. I'm not, okay. I'm not 100% on it. Right. And I put it away so that I could look at it with fresh eyes, basically. Kevin yeah. likes it. Kevin really likes it. So, yeah, yeah, I think, I think uh, what I found easy with yours uh, as it was just comparing it to a whole load of thumbnails on your Instagram, thinking, what's different about this one that's not working? Why does that one work over this one? And then yeah, that's yeah. when you could see about the white space. It's just sometimes you just get so lost in your work, you forget actually what makes it work. Yeah, you do. Mm. And, and I've actually been, I was trying to do one another day. Oh, yeah, the one I actually did of John Robb, I think it was, the one I just told you about. Mm. Um, and I was like, make sure you leave white. In my head, it was like, leave white, leave white. <laughs> it was like yeah. beaming out in my head. Yeah, I, I used to, do you know, I used to have um, a list, a big, bold list on my wall in the art studio. This is before I had it, I had it all done up. And it used to say things like that white space blurred edges um thirds all these different things that made paintings work for me and I used to just yeah you just used to look up and refer to them once in a while oh yeah I've got to remember soft edges got to remember this obviously this is when I was more perhaps a a, a beginner sort of thing but it's not a bad idea if you find yourself losing a way to remind uh, losing your way to remind yourself as to what those things are that make your general paintings that you like work and then have them up and and just refer to them from time to time. So no, no shame in that whatsoever, you know. Now, also what I've done is, because um, I've got that big poster on the wall that I told you about, but that's the other end of my room. So yeah. now what I've done is got some of the prints. You know the prints I've had done? Yeah. The prints of key pieces I like, and I put them directly in front of where I work. Yeah. Because before I'd be working on a piece and I'd be thinking, how did I do you know, a certain piece, because I want to mm. be able to do it on this one. And yeah. I'd have to then go go walk the other side of the room, have a look at it, and then by the time I got back to my table, I've forgotten. Do you know what I mean? You can't yeah. retain it that well. Yeah. So, yeah, I've done yeah. that now as well. But do you want to tell everybody about the yours as well? Because you were having a problem with one of your paintings. Yeah, so while we were... So, basically, we did this chat over FaceTime. I think it was a case of, oh, I'm having a problem... And in the end, it's like, oh, do you want to do you want to chat? Yeah, let's do it over FaceTime. So we did it over FaceTime. You were showing me the, the your piece, and I said, I was talking about, oh, you know, I'm having a bit of a nightmare at the moment as well. La 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 la. And oh, I've got this painting on my easel that I had there for ages. It was the painting I had done. I don't know if it was the was it the yeah it was the one I did before the donuts, and basically it's of three really colourful bottles with marbles sitting in the neck of the bottles. And and the reason I did that painting was because when the gallery came over to look at my work and take some away with them to put up, they were um, looking and said, oh, you know, this, that and the other. And they said to me, basically a bit like that woman said to you, try this, try that. Um, 
they said, oh, it'd be really good if you, if you could do some um, those really colourful bottles and somehow incorporate it with your marbles. Well, I, I said, I have already done a painting like that in the past, but it was some years ago and that sold a long time ago. But of course, when they left, what did I want to do? Well, I wanted to please the gallery, didn't I? I was like, oh, yeah. I really need to do that. So I set up this painting of three bottles, all different heights, um, with a marble sort of sitting on the heads, the necks of the bottle, which kind of almost looks like glass flowers, I suppose you could call them. I don't know. Hence the name Blooming Marvellous, which I called it. Um, Anyway, really what happened there was I was painting to please someone else. Um, I wasn't really... It wasn't really coming from me initially. And I probably didn't think too much or so much about the composition. I did in the fact that I was looking at the overall heights, making sure that they were different. There was a bottle forwards, a bottle in the background. And, you know, I was looking at it in that way. But, um, yeah, there was something when I had well I say I finished that painting that was definitely a painting I'd more abandoned than finished I was thinking well I can't seem to make this any better so this is where it this is where I'm finishing it anyway put it up on my website put it on Instagram um and then Paul said this is my husband for any new listeners Paul said oh that yeah I'm not, not so keen on this one it's not what it's not because normally he's very honest normally he's like oh, i really like that this one he was like hmm yeah i don't like this one so much and of course when someone says that that's it isn't it you're like oh yeah hideous there's something yeah. hideously wrong with this painting oh my god what have i done it's a monster took it straight off my website and i didn't bother taking it off instagram but but i took it off my website and certainly took it off for sale because i thought well if he's not happy with that not that I do it to make him happy, because obviously he's not an artist, but it, I knew straight away when he said it, I knew really the instinct that it wasn't right was already there. Um, but I just could not put my finger on what it was. I was going to throw this painting in the end, but he said, no, don't throw it. So I just, I just left it on the easel, and it's been st- sat there in, on the... Um, staring at you. Staring at me, yeah. I actually faced it against the wall for quite a while. Staring at me for some time, though, um, and I then had this massive art block and didn't paint for, well, ages, ages and ages and ages. I think it was sort of months, really. I was just doing other little bits, but I wasn't really painting. And I shared that on the podcast. Anyway, um, yeah, sometimes I think it takes one painting that doesn't work that can throw you down this hole, can't it? And it's fine, you find it hard to get out of. Anyway, so... After I sort of felt the paintbrushes finally calling me again and I finally thought, you know what, I'm not going to do anything else with that painting. I'm just going to... It is what it is. I'm not putting it up for sale. And I moved on to the donuts. The donuts was then a successful painting, which I really, really like. Um, One of my favourites, actually. So that um, picked me up a bit. But in the back of my mind, there's this blooming painting on the easel, which I thought was too nice in parts to throw away because I certainly liked the marbles and the bubbles in the marbles and things like that. But there was something else that made me want to throw it away. And I just it's just because I thought, I don't know what, I'm, what to do with this. But when we were on the phone talking about your, your painting that wasn't working for you, I was sort of saying to you, yeah, I've got this painting. I know what you mean. It doesn't work. I don't know what to do with it. Do I throw it? Do I not? And you said, oh, I can't remember exactly what it looks like. And I showed it to you on the easel and you said... Um, yeah, well, you suggested fairy lights, didn't you? You'd yeah, been thinking about that. <clears throat> yeah, and, and you'd sort of said, yeah, I can see what you mean. It's not quite something not right about it. Have you tried maybe pushing that one that's meant to be in the background a bit further by blurring the... Um, in the background which was which was so funny because it's something I would normally do do you yeah. know what I mean it's something I would and I've I've got lots of paintings that I have that shows that very technique that I use and I hadn't used it on this one which was really strange and there was other things as well and and I looked at it and thought right well I I said to you I was thinking of maybe 
taking those bottles back out of my cupboard, wrapping some fairy lights, taking a new photograph just to get the idea of where these lights would bounce off and, you know, trying that to see if I can make the composition a bit more interesting. So we came off the phone. You had a new spark of, right, I'm going to try this painting again, again tomorrow. I came off the phone saying, right, you know, I've got a plan. I, this painting isn't failed yet. I think it may be the, the thing is it's just not finished. So I, I then... I tried it digitally, didn't I? Yeah, you d- yes, you did. So Tara said and to me... And you said, oh, I might just print it and draw it, didn't you? Draw on the top, didn't you? Yeah, I thought, oh, perhaps I'll just sort of see how that works. And you went, why don't you do it digitally? Well, I've got Procreate on my iPad, which I haven't used for ages, forgotten how to use it. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll try that. So I charged up my digital pen. <laughs> uh, I had to remind myself how on earth to work Procreate. And um, I did it digitally. And I thought, now that is definitely definitely much more of an interesting painting of course I did it the lazy way and did the fairy lights with you know just using a I think it's called a flare where you put it you put the pen down and it just creates this little flare of light um and I I liked that I thought actually yeah that that could really work so there I was went on to my painting decided to do this um you know these fairy lights and without really thinking because I was in a bit of a rush to like because you know when you get this rush of I really want to make yeah, I really yeah. want to see this finally sort turn it out. into something so I did the wires the first day and I thought, oh yeah this is great the wires are working great I've got all the little glints of white um the light that hits the wires da 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 um and I thought right next thing is the light so I went stupidly this is so such a rookie thing to do stupidly there was me um painting the lights um I only did about three of them as they were on this digital painting of like a flare and oh is this on the actual work yeah on the actual talk- work oh I, oh I thought I thought you hadn't got past because we had to oh no 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 I'd sent I'd sent you the picture and you were the like composition oh, yeah, that works, right that works right. a lot better and we'd sort yeah. of suggested things between us I went then onto my yeah. painting so this is me then really instead of looking at the image that I took of the fairy lights I was looking at the digital painting and of course doing these sort of flared lights and thinking oh yeah that's pretty good and then standing back after I'd had about five or six of these lights thinking what am I doing (laughs) that's not what lights really look like is it they don't flare like that Uh, so (laughs) straight away I'm thinking oh my god I've got to wipe it off so the next and this was not until it wasn't actually until um I think it was about 24 hours later I was like oh my god what have I done what was I thinking and that was me wiping these lights off thinking I uh, this is this is not how lights work I'm I'm looking at something it's not actually real yeah so then I've gone back and thought right okay if I was looking at these bottles with these fairy lights what would the actual lights be like so then I referred to my actual image and I and and I I had the bottles set up as well so I put the fairy lights on and I was looking at these lights thinking right they don't flare they don't look anything like that they don't look anything like as spectacular as in this brilliant light however I'm doing a realism painting. I'm not doing a. I'm, I'm not trying. I'm not aiming for anything other than what I see. So then I went back to it and painted the lights as I saw them, and thought, ah, oh, yes, now that works a lot better. And and um, so I did that. And yeah, I haven't actually shown you yet, but they do. It is a much much better painting for it. I yeah. still don't know if I am. Um, able to put that for sale or not because I think my confidence in the painting has had plummeted enough before I did that that right I'm not sure I could I'm not sure whether I can put it up or not maybe I probably need to show you now um yeah uh, you know show me maybe show Kerry as well uh, well Paul uh, because Paul's very honest yeah um I know but Paul might be too close to it yeah something and showing someone arty like kerry Mm. or you know because she might will she be honest oh yeah she would be yeah yeah but yeah i don't know 
don't know, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I just probably need to just not look at it again for a while and then, yeah. And if it magically appears on my website at some point, <laughs> you'll know, actually, I'm happy with it because it's either going to be that I wasn't finished in the first place. Yeah. Um, and it, this is now finished or it was, it's never going to work. Because yeah. the only what I am worried about is it, I feel like it's very contrived, and I think that's been my problem. My problem is, you know, normally yeah, when I, I do my because they suggested it. Yeah, it's because they suggested it, and they didn't suggest that composition. It's just that I was I rushed into doing something that somebody else suggested, and I didn't put enough thought into the composition, which is basically why we're talking today about this, the importance of like planning ahead. Because it, most of my paintings that I do. I can spend days on getting the right setup. I don't want it to look too contrived. I don't want it to look, um, you know, like I've set something up, <laughs> if you like. Do you yeah. know? Well, sometimes, sometimes it's obvious and that's fine, but it's because it's... I think this one just bothered me. I don't know what it was about this particular one. But taking the time on the initial planning is absolutely the difference between a successful piece and a non-successful piece. And this was a classic demonstration of that. You know, if I had put more time into that and looked back and thought, actually, no, what am I doing here? This, what, there wouldn't, this wouldn't work. Or I should have taken time to plan it in the first place and take and put more thought into it. And kept and keep going back to it and looking and thinking, and then I probably would have scrapped the idea altogether and thought, "What am I doing? I'm doing this for someone else. I'm not doing it for me." Why? Why? And in fact, it it, it reminds me a bit of when you're doing a commission. I hate doing commissions, and I very rarely do oh, them. Oh yeah. Um, and and it's because somebody else suggests to you what you're going to do, and instantly I don't want to do it because I think, "Oh, I'm, I'm trying to please someone else here." And so also, you're you're worried about will they like it at the end. Yeah. I think that's one of the things, isn't it? It's like you're doing it thinking, is this what, I, what they want? Not, is this what I want it to yeah. look like? And even if you do like it yourself, you mm. don't know if they're going to like it. I mean, I've no doubt that if I, if I put that into the gallery, if, if somebody walked into there that really loved absolute wild pops of colour and have a really colourful room and they really are like that, they'd probably love it. Yeah. Um. So it's probably something for someone, but... Yeah, it's just, yeah, that that's sort of doing it for someone else. And I think the problem with that is that you often, they often have it in their head what they want and you kind of pull it out from their head and it's not really what you would do. And that's where no. I lost out at the planning stage. That's where the planning just wasn't there. And, you know, realising afterwards that the one painting that hadn't come from me and I I hadn't done that planning that I would normally do hasn't worked yeah you know so and I think it took me a lot longer in the long run obviously to do the painting because if I'd have taken yeah because you're trying to make it right aren't you yeah if I'd have taken that time in the in the initial stages I would have saved myself a lot of time in the in the on the process of painting because it would have just worked when I'd done it it would have just worked and I could have moved it on, but instead it sat there on the easel for months and I've gone back to it and come away from it. What a waste of time. I'd have probably been better sticking a knife through it and chucking it in the skip, to be honest, because <laughs> I've done that before with the, one of the bear paintings I did when I started um, my oil, oil painting in the very beginning. I always remember that. There was one, and there was too much about it that I really loved. I did this old pipe. This is, I don't do these things anymore, but... It was an old pipe lying on the side. It was was based in an antique shop and I did this bear and everything I loved about the painting, I really loved. But there was this area in the painting that would not work and I kept working on this bloody painting for what felt like... Well, it was months. And in the end, I had to ask myself, how much much more time am I going to spend on this? I I can't get this to work. And in the end, I did put my foot through it and, um, you know... I did you feel that better the, for it? I did. Whether that yeah. was the right decision or not, I don't know, but probably, yeah. probably. Well, sometimes, I mean, I do paintings. And obviously, I don't put, they don't take me the time that they do for you. Mm. But 
I will sometimes, I've painted something and I'm thinking, yeah, it's not really working. So then I'll go in with it again with the pastel and, yeah, it's still not working. And then I'll go in it again. And you, you sometimes think, you're not making it any better here. Mm. You still think you can make it better, don't you? And occasionally, mm. occasionally you can. But generally all you're doing is just making it look more and more overworked and rubbish. Yeah, I think so. And And like you say, when you're doing something that you know is say an oil painting that takes such a long time it's even more important to do that planning because it takes such a long you've invested so much time into it and that's why it's so hard to to chuck it because you're like i've invested so much time into this painting and now i've got to throw it away but i guess that's just a very long lesson learned at least i guess when you know you're working on paper and you're just doing something that takes a few hours it's not quite so painful yeah (laughs) You know, and you can get away with being more spontaneous. Like you didn't like drawing that painting, you, that that painting no. out, and you know you can probably get away with that more, can't you? Because you can keep trying things until they work. With an oil painting, it's a bit different. You know, it's it's a bit different. Yeah. You don't. You have to plan in advance. Well, I hate planning, and the, and the reason mm. I hate planning is for me, just like you said, it just takes away the spontane- spontaneity. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it kind of loses the fun for me when I do yeah. that. Yeah. But I do, I do still plan in some form. Some well, sometimes I plan in some form. So sometimes when I've got my reference photo, for example, quite often I'll just paint straight. So it'll be very symmet- not symmetrical but it will be in the middle the face will be in yeah. the middle but sometimes i will look look at the photo and then i will push it to one side or the other so it has an unusual composition but yeah. i'll do that with the photograph first so then i'll kind of follow that when i'm actually painting it and i also use planning like you were saying you use procreate yeah to put your little dots on mm. if for example i've got a painting and i've decided I want to put some text on it or I want to put a bit of collage, then I will use that as my planning tool. So I might have already done part of the painting and then I'll go in with digitally and I'll start writing on it and go, oh, God, no, that does not work, positioning there. So I'll kind of work out how to balance my composition with the text or whatever. But Yeah, it's such a good way of doing it, it, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. And also it looks so real i know Mm. obviously your lights don't look real real but do you know what i mean it does look like it's part of the painting doesn't it yeah so oh yeah i think that's definitely a a good good thing to do and definitely cropping your photo whatever first well that's i think taking photographs is a really good way of um say for instance like if you're doing a still life setup taking photographs in many many ways and cropping them like you say in different ways that's another way of digitally trying to work out a composition because uh, you know you can use your thirds you can use grids you can you know you can decide whether it works in portrait or in landscape better and you can or or square even you know and that's so easy that's the thing about digital photographs and then loading them up to your ipad or your computer you can try things like that you can even crop and just think actually i don't like any of that set up i really like the corner of that bottle oh i could make that into something and you can crop that bit out and then think oh i could add something else there and it's so many different ways you can use that and that's something that you know is a lot quicker to get an idea of a competition before you start moving on to maybe composition composition. did i say competition (laughs) (laughs) i don't know why i said that um yeah so so i think photographs photographic reference is such a quick easy way of seeing what works without you know before even bothering with drawing them out you know yeah or like i say once you've done part of it depending on how you work if you work a bit more spontaneous like me it's still useful for when you're part way through for if you want to add bits but you're Mm. not quite sure where to put them it works brilliantly for that yeah yeah and the good um, thing about the procreate oh, what i remembered was the layers where you know you can just add a layer and then you can literally go between you can flick between before and after really easily and think oh yeah no yeah. that works better you know yeah I, w- I was the other day yesterday actually i was doing some thumbnail sketches now 
if, if anybody doesn't know what they are, they're just tiny little sketches where you're trying to work out a composition or trying to work out something works. Yeah. And as I said to you before, I don't often do it, but I've got this one painting that I um I did it for a while back. I say I, I do do it occasionally, and it's um. It was only a few months ago I did it, I think. It's a yellow painting and it's got... Oh, yeah, you know it because you helped me with this one, actually. I know, and it's got belief in it, hasn't it? Belief or no, something? No, not that one. Not that this one. is... It's very yellow mm. and it's got these little creatures that come out of its head and they sort of make its hair up. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're these, these two little... And they're basically... It's called Shadow of Doubt and these little creatures are like those needly little... Oh, I'm not sure if you've got that right. They're those... Yeah. Yeah, They're those yeah. things. Yeah. But I wasn't sure. And you, I was trying to put pink on it. Do you remember? I had a splash yeah. of colour and you were helping me with that. But I kind of was thinking about that concept because I'm, at the moment I'm still trying to look at something to grasp to make a collection. I keep changing yeah. my mind what it's going to be. And um, so I thought I wouldn't mind doing some more of these. So they've all got these little creatures in them. So I was like scribbling out faces and trying to work out where these little things could go. But really, I, I, when I sketch, I don't know if you do this, sometimes I sketch right on the piss. Oh, do, do you? you? Yeah. So you... I, I don't mean slightly. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm doing my little sketches for like, you know, trying to work out a composition. It looks, sometimes they're almost at a 45 degree angle. Do you know, when you first said that, I thought you meant when you're drunk. <laughs> oh no, no, I'm no. Thinking, this is And no. then it just took me a second to realise you meant like a completely weird angle. <laughs> yeah. So I've got this um I was, I was drawing the other day and I'm like, Jesus, that's like at forty five degree angle. <laughs> so then I'll tear the page out and then I'll move it round the opposite way forty five degrees and then do, do a box and then I can, you know, work as though it's my page and yeah. then work out where this thing will fit. But it it was so useful. I mean, I don't know if they're going to work when I actually mm. work them up. And, and all they are is very simple line work. So mm. there'll be an outline of a face. There's no shading or anything there. But it's just like, oh, if I put that there, would that work? Where can I put something that will balance it? And what I'll quite often do if I'm doing that is I'll then trace over it and I might move things slightly. Yeah. So it's almost like, I suppose if you did that digitally again, it'd be, you could tweak it much simpler with your layers. Yeah. Do you do that as well? Um, well, it's, I think it's, I, I have used thumbnail sketches in the past, definitely, just to get like a basic idea, even if it's something in my head that I haven't actually got a setup for yet. I think, oh, yeah. I wonder if I could do this. And sometimes um, I'll just literally draw some angles to see... Uh, if I had a bottle roughly there and then I put one here and you can literally have three lines and think, yeah, those angles work and those heights together yeah. work, you know, before I even bother trying to set anything up. So that, they're those really initial stages where you've just got something in your mind and you haven't even got the, the props to use yet. I'm Obviously, I'm talking about still life here. Um, yeah, I do you not always think, I always think you can get... You always need some sort of diagonal quite often in there. Yes. And I to, to, yeah. Ugh, don't know what it is, but it works, doesn't it? And actually, I think that was another part of the problem with that painting I was talking about, the bottle painting. It, I, everything, yeah. everything in it seemed to be vertical because all the bottles were standing and I realised there was no, nothing horizontal at all and no diagonals. And actually, this is where the wires helped so much because they helped to you know, give it a different angle. So, yeah, aiming for various different angles and not too many of one. And I've done that in the past. I remember being, when I was very beginning, doing a seascape. Can you imagine me doing a, a seascape? No. Um, a seascape with a boat. Um, and and I remember, you know, that painting was one where everything in it was horizontal. You've got the horizon line, you've got the beach line, and then you've got, you know, the boat as a horizontal. There was only one small thing that was um, vertical, which was the mast, I think, of the boat. And there was nothing else. And it was such a boring painting. And I couldn't work out why. I was thinking, why is this not working? But that was why, that was why it wasn't working, because there were not enough angles. That's another thing to think about in your very beginning stages, you know. Where, you know, yeah, OK, you've got the verticals, you've got maybe a horizontal, and what about... What about these 
these other angles make it, it makes it so much more interesting when you have more than one or two angles in it so yeah yeah i'm just looking at this picture of this space that i've got in front of me i've got a painting resting up against the wall mm. and at, near the top of the painting starting from the left is this like just this swishy bit of pink and then you can literally almost go diagonally down to the sweep of the eye yeah and, and none of that was intentional but looking at it now well, it probably was intentional, mm. as in my subconscious did it, if you know what I mean. But it's you can see why it makes it work. Yeah. Because it flows your eye through, doesn't it? Your yeah. eye sort of follows down and then goes across and makes you look around the painting a little bit more. Definitely. You're looking for, a, you're looking for something that takes your eye on a journey, you know, and that's I, I think it's kind of like... Um, if you look at it as a shape, so the shape of your composition, does your eye flow around it? Does does that shape flow, if you like? And yeah, this will go... I mean, I know we've spoken about this before in the past, about patterns of light and dark and harmony and colour and everything like that. All of these things, if you plan these things ahead, again, it's, you know, the painting part then becomes the easy part, you know. Sometimes I think the actual... Um, composition can be as hard as the painting itself the, to getting one that works but yeah. this is another thing as well sometimes when I do when I arrange my still life setups I will photograph it in so many different ways sometimes I'll take like 100 photos but I'll also take them from far back as well so I've got plenty of room to you know test different you know um, compositions just by cropping, cropping. And zooming in and cropping, and I can do portrait and landscape. If I try to get the, the initial setup in the first photo, I've got no room to, you know, to zoom out and things like that. So that's another thing. And that you can do it a different way as well if you want to do it a, the long way round, which you know is pr- probably the, the more pure way is to use one of those things. You can cut a piece of cardboard out of a cereal packet and you can cut a hole into it, and it's called a viewfinder. You can easily make your own, and you can use that. Um, which I would probably, which I certainly would use if I was doing a, a life, um, uh, a drawing from life, if you know what I mean. If I was going to do a landscape, I would probably always have one of those on me. So you can use that to look through and find your best view. But you, obviously when you're, when you're painting from life, you can't do quite as much planning because you are in that situation there and then and you... You know, you want to get something done. But even in, in a situation like that, you still need to think, OK, I, what, where am I going to paint? Um, what view am I painting? How is this going to work? That's where the thumbnail sketches are so important, aren't they, as well, in that sort of scenario, I think. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think sometimes you don't even actually need to draw it out. You just no. need to take time to consider. To think, mm. Yeah, yeah, to think so. So if I if I'm drawing a face, maybe I think, okay, I want I want an eye to fall on a third. Yeah, near the third. Of, do you, do you, yeah, because a thirds are so so big, aren't they? And we've talked about those before, haven't we? But for yeah. any beginners, if you if you put if you try and get a kind of key element on, if you if you split your painting up into so three by three, and if you put things on the thirds, it tends to work quite well. Yeah. I've seen it before on place uh, things like Landscape Artist of the Year, where yeah. I've watched that in the past. And I remember watching one, and somebody had chosen to paint this landscape of it. It was like a, a lake in the background and some houses sort of behind it. And there was this tree. Um, but what they'd done is they'd done this beautiful painting. I mean, it was lovely how, they would, how they'd done the water and the houses. I loved it. But... They had put this tree coming up virtually through the middle of the painting, almost cutting it in half. And what they'd done is, because that was what they were sort of seeing, that's what they did. But reality is, all they needed to do was move that tree or either eliminate it or move that tree to the left by a bit, or quite some, and the painting would have been stunning. But that, yeah. that one mistake they did was putting something sort of almost slicing through the middle of the painting. It just looked, it totally broke the painting in half, you know. And um, if they'd have really thought about that in the beginning, thought, actually, that's not going to work. 
Um, what yeah. am I going to do about this tree? Because I really don't like it and it's in my way. Well, don't paint it. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't use it. Don't put it in there. No one's going to know, you know. I, I, did, I did a painting uh, quite a while back, actually. Um, and I decided I was just going to shunt. I'd got a reference just for a normal face, um, mm. kind of on a three-quarter angle. And I decided I was going to shunt it right over to one side. Yeah. So it would sort of be sitting on the third almost. Yeah. Um, and I, I did it, and it was like a pale green, and it had some collage in it. And at the end, I thought, oh, ugh, I hate that. That looks terrible. And I felt like, even though I'd balanced it out with other elements the other side, and I thought, oh, it looks shocking. But it's really strange, because I then got that painting out, like, a few weeks later. I thought, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes, even though you think you've done something bad, the mm. composition did work. Yeah, but it's just at the time, I guess it it got into my head strange that I'd gone too far. I'd pushed too far with this because yeah. it was so far. But yeah, now I love it. And I think that's what I need to think about this painting I've done because I was staring it for so long Yeah, in the stage it was at where it was seriously not right. Yeah. I now wonder if I just can't see that this has just finished it. And, you know, if, yeah. if this now works and I've got nothing to worry about or whether it's... Or whether it's just because I'm I'm still seeing it as the problem painting, so I think that's yeah. what I just need to leave it on my easel for a while and and just see how I feel about it in a month's time. But um, yeah, so so I I personally think if you spend if you aim to spend, you know, more time than you ever thought you need on the planning stage, the painting then becomes the easy part, you know. It's definitely yeah. we've we've learned that lesson more recently i mean i say that i've always known this i've always known this but the minute you don't do it is the minute everything starts falling apart <laughs> yeah fresh eyes definitely as well oh. that definitely helps doesn't it Some, someone else mm. who knows what they're doing a little bit either uh, really yeah helps, doesn't it as well i mean someone who doesn't can also help but if you yeah. know what you're doing, it definitely helps say, oh, no, move it further down. Well, yeah, bit. because, I mean, I, I, I think if I, you, you were able to say to me, oh, that's, that's not, it's missing some verticals, uh, not verticals, um, some a horizontals. Diagonals. And I'm like, oh, well, now a, a person who doesn't paint as not an artist probably wouldn't have said that. No. And maybe if nobody else might have said to you, oh, you're missing some white space in the background. No. These are all things both of us knew, but just needed the an artist to, to remind them of that. And oh God, yeah. you've just you've missed out that, you know. It's so stupid, yeah, asking isn't it? other people is very important. Sometimes it is a good idea to ask someone who's not an artist as well, because they're seeing it more as a, a viewer and go, yeah, I love it. Whereas Mart- maybe an artist might pick pick out things that, you know, yeah aren't necessarily overly important in some respects do you know what I mean yeah there's one more thing I don't know if you've got any more but I was I've been doing lately (laughs) it's obviously not helping me at the moment but um and that is I've been changing the faces I'm drawing some of them to black and white yeah because as well as like compositionally it just makes it simpler doesn't it because you're not thinking about color you're just thinking about black and white and i don't use the actual colors for me i don't use the colors in the work but you can get the balance of the lights and the darks so you're um, talking about your initial photograph the photograph aren't you? Yeah. the normal reference yeah mm. i've started changing to black and white because because i don't even use the colors no. anyway but what i do i change them but even if you do use the colors you can have two versions but it just helps you see where the darks and the lights are, and so you can balance it a little bit more as well, I think. You you can see where, where you might want to shift it over because then that gives you, you know, it's more pleasing with where the light falls. Yeah. I, yeah. Do you do that? What, my initial photographs? I have done in the past, yeah, because yeah. sometimes I do, um, well, I always do a monochrome underpainting, a light just to map out my shadows, and yeah. uh, just so that I know that the pattern of light and dark is, you know, is um it's right really and sometimes you can get distracted by color yeah definitely so yeah making your initial image black and white i think does help that definitely but yeah so plan plan ahead if you're in the midst of deciding what to paint plan it plan it and plan it a bit more before you start and you'll find it'll be probably a successful painting so yeah learn by our mistakes (laughs) 
that. And if it's not, phone a friend. Phone a friend, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, normally it would be time to read out the answer to our last question. That question was, what topic would you like us to cover in a future episode and why? However, it seems you must have covered pretty much everything. For the first time ever, we have had no answers. So we, we usually get so many that we can't actually read them all out. So if you have got any ideas, please do let us know. Just drop us a, an email. Um, but for now, we're going to move on to our new question. Yep, and that question is, what do you listen to while you create? And does your choice affect the results? What do you listen to while you create? And does your choice affect the results? I think perhaps, Tara, we could do an episode on that because you've been experimenting with this recently, haven't you? So perhaps we could... Oh, yes, I was. Yeah. I wonder if we, could, if we could do a whole episode on that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, well, maybe let's know we could do... <coughs> I was just think maybe we could do an episode on what around you affects. So it's not just music. That's maybe a good music's idea. Maybe music's one aspect. Mm. Your surroundings... Okay, yeah, let's make that yeah. our next episode. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but we still want to know your ideas if you have any. Yeah, <laughs> we do. So, uh, as always, you can let us know your answers in the Facebook group, which if you haven't already joined, I highly suggest you do. We'll put the question up there and also on the Facebook page and, of course, on Instagram, which is Kick in the Creatives. And we hope that gave you the kick in the creatives you needed. Don't forget to pop over to our website at kickinthecreatives.com to find out how you can take part in some of our upcoming creative challenges. And of course, there you can also subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we'd be really grateful if you would leave us a little review on iTunes. Thank you so much again, Tommy Toothless, for yours. I absolutely loved it. I shared it on my personal page because I was so chuffed. Um, Or even just a star rating if you don't have a lot of time. Um... If you want to find either myself or Tara online, I'm on Instagram as Sandra.Busby and my website is SandraBusbyArt.com. I'm also on Facebook as Sandra Busby Artist. More about you, Tara. You Where can people me? find out? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <See. laughs> yeah. Where can people find out can... about you? <laughs> Yeah, so you can find me on my website, which is tararoscoeart.com, on Instagram and Facebook as Tara Roscoe Art. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to our Kicking the Creatives newsletter, where you can keep up with all the challenges and the podcast. And you can do that by going over to our website and subscribing. Also, we've released a course, which is how to create characters and cartoons. And you can find a link to the course on the website, or you can just go to kickinthecreatives.com forward slash cartoon course where you can find out more yeah and so just on another note we've just had our latest um annual bill that we've had to pay to run this podcast so i just wanted to say thank you so much for all of our kofi supporters um who've supported us throughout this year so far because you have helped us actually pay that bill (laughs) because it does cost to do this and you know it really really does help if you can sort of help us out here because we don't really earn anything else from this we do it for you and it's lovely um, of you to help us to actually pay for that um so our latest Kofi supporters thank you so so much angelica wallerman and she says thank you for your wonderful work joanna brown as always thank you so so much you're a regular supporter we cannot tell you how much we appreciate your um help um and also peter payne he says absolutely love what you do and i'm working my way through the podcast so i'll have a coffee with you and tommy allen says you guys are awesome Uh, now i reckon tommy allen must be american i think so too (laughs) (laughs) so um, honestly again i cannot tell you how much we appreciate your support it really does help us with the costs of running the kick in the creatives and it also um, shows us you like what we do and you'd like us to continue so there are other ways of course that you can help if you can't help us by um kofi you can share our episodes with other creatives or like tommy toothless you can write us a lovely review it all helps and we really appreciate any support you can give but that's it for now and we will see you next time see ya bye thank you so much for listening we hope you enjoyed the episode and if you did perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on itunes back soon